All right, so we're going to start uh, for the first part. We're going to use PHP Storm, and I want you to use version 6. So you can download that, and I have the license in the Canvas, so you can uh, utilize that. It has some nice new features that we're going to take advantage of, and we'll set that up today. So that's, that's what we're going to work on today. So the uh, PHP Storm 6 is changed around. They've added a lot of features, but it's basically the same as we've used in the past. It's a project window with all the files here, and uh, we can upload files to um, uh, our, rem our remote live site uh, directly from here. So we'll be utilizing that so we can test our live site uh, throughout the class. So the first thing I want to do is you can create a new project, and they have different types of projects. You, we can create a Twitter bootstrap project or an HTML boilerplate project or just an empty project. So I'm going to start by creating an HTML5 boilerplate and it goes out and, and looks at HTML5boilerplate.com and it finds the most recent version of this. And this is just a set of, of files that are uh, more or less standardized. So we'll, uh, we'll create this project. And inside of it, it comes pre-configured with some CSS files, uh, some JavaScript files, and uh, the HTML files themselves. So the, the index.html file on this initial piece is a standard HTML5 website. Okay, It starts with the doc type, which uh, you should know from the prior classes that this is an HTML5 doc type. And why do we even have a doc type anymore? Because of the really old IE. It's really for IE so that it doesn't go into quirks mode, which makes it go back to version 5 of IE. Even their latest version of 9 or 10 or 11, whatever we're on now, then uh, if they don't see a doc type, they'll revert all the way back to version 5 quirks mode, which is really bad. So that was why they, they wanted to make the doc type as simple as possible, but they needed something. So they, they just called it HTML. You know, Internet Explorer is good at one thing. Yeah. one browser for downloading other browsers. Yeah, if it doesn't see a doc type at all. If you don't have this in here, it'll revert back. It's bad. So this this just gives you a quick thing. We can we can look at this in a browser. Uh, in PHP Storm, I can say a view in my browser, and it will load it in my default browser, which in this case is uh, Chrome. And it says, "Hello, this is a HTML5 boilerplate." So this is the actual file. Obviously, not much to it. All right, so we'll be using PHP in this, uh, the, the editor, just to edit HTML files. We can, we can debug JavaScript with this. We can do all kinds of stuff. It does all the formatting of HTML for us and CSS, which I like. So instead of just using a straight text editor, we might as well use an IDE. They, they give you one as an example, yeah. Yeah. All right. So they give you lots of other stuff. We'll we'll skip most of that. Uh, the next thing I wanted to show about PHP six is they have this cool feature uh, that they call file watchers. And those that had Rails with me, who who didn't have Rails with me? Everybody. Okay. Good. Oh well, Brandon's lying back there. Uh, the, we had a, a gem called SAS. Remember SAS? And SAS allows you to, if I look at uh, look up SAS gem, it's, a, it's short for Syntactically Awesome Style Sheets. And this is the home page, uh, sas-lang.com. And this gives you an example of what the differences are between straight CSS and the, the uh, SAS CSS. And remember that if we wrote 
SCSS files or SASE files, we had to compile it into the native CSS code, right? So it, it went through this compilation process to create the CSS because it's using some non-standard things and it has to convert this like this dollar sign blue. It has to convert that. That's a variable in SCSS. But in CSS, it, it has to replace that with the actual code or the browsers won't be able to know how to use it. So that's a gem that we can install if we have the Ruby environment on our computer and we just say gem install SAS. All right. So we want to have that gem installed somewhere on our computer. Is that yes. I think you don't have to use SAS, but it will make, we're going to be doing some complicated style sheets, and it makes the style sheets a lot easier to play with. And I think you should be using it in all your development because of just, if you just used it for variables on your colors, you're going to save yourself a bit you know, hours of work. And as you learn it and learn more and more features, it makes your, your coding, you're actually programming style sheets instead of just writing text. It just makes it a lot simpler. All right, so we installed the gem. Well, we're going to be, SAS includes SCSS and SAS. SCSS is the version, well, I just closed that. This is, th this same gem deals with both of them, okay? So we install SAS, that gives us SCSS as well. SCSS, in my opinion, is the better version because it allows us to write just standard CSS in that. And uh, if we don't use any of their coding principles, it will compile straight across, we don't have any issues. The SASS uses some non-standard indentation to tell whether or not we have something that's inherited. And that is non-standard CSS, so you can't, you have to compile that. And you get away from writing standard CSS. So I think this is the poorer cousin, this is the, the better solution, SCSS, all right? So but that gem controls both of those. Okay, good question. So inside of PHP, we want to have a way so that we don't have to keep compiling this all the time and going through an extra step. In Rails development, it does that for you. You just change the name of the CSS file to .scss. It will compile it for you into the CSS file and upload that to your site, right? That's what it uses. So we want to do something similar, and PHP Storm 6 has that option. So under the settings, oh, so it's like a no, it's built into PHP Storm. All right, so under settings, under file watchers, uh, we want to add a new file watcher. And so we hit the plus sign over here. And it's got all of these. It's got CoffeeScript, which is a similar system where it compiles JavaScript or CoffeeScript files down into JavaScript. So it's like a superset of JavaScript, same concept. So we can do that with all kinds of things, this Uglify, which uh, makes your JavaScript smaller. Uh, things like that, all is done for you. So we want to do the SAT, uh, SCSS version, sorry. Yeah, make sure you're running six. All right, so the new watcher comes up and says SCSS. These are the standard filters and standard settings. It went out and found that I'm running Ruby 193. It found the, the SAS batch file that the gem install did for me. And I don't have to do anything for this if I'm on Windows. I just say, OK, click, I'm done. Now, on a Mac, uh, unfortunately, we have to do something different. I can't really demonstrate that. Uh, you have to change an environmental variable here that is your gem path. So we'll have to t find out what your gem path is on your Mac and copy it and paste it into here by creating a new uh, environmental variable called gem path, gem underscore path. And then the value is going to be some uh, path that's on your Mac. So if you have that issue, we'll deal with that outside class.
Okay, so we hit OK, and we hit Apply, and OK. And now we have a watcher sitting there. So if I have a, a style sheet, let's just create a new style sheet. Um, that's interesting. XSLT style sheet. I'm not sure that's what I want, but let's see. Uh, we'll call it uh, test dot, and we'll call it dot SCSS. We give it the name of the SCSS, and it will automatically. Uh, now, nah, see, that's not going to be right. We don't want the XSL version, so we'll just just say a new file. All right, so I'm going to call it. Uh, actually, I'm going to delete that because it's going to mess it up. Let's make a new, just a new file. We'll call it uh, test.scss. All right, so that's the right file type now. So I can uh, create CSS in here now. Like I could say uh, my body tag has some stuff in it, like the, the background color. That's the other reason I like PHP Storm. It's got the IntelliSense in it. So I can say background. Uh, uh, dash color, and I can say uh, blue. All right. You like blue, right? I like blue. So what what you see in the background is everything. Every time I make a change, it runs something here at the bottom. Watch down here, down here. Watch this when I make a change to my style sheet. It's it actually compiles in the background. And creates the .css file associated with this. Yeah, and it might say, "Do you want to enable that?" And you say, "Yes." Yeah, you might get a pop-up that add says, a "Add a watcher." Right. Watcher, and then it says, Pass program to run to, or set program to run to yeah, on the Mac. Yeah, that's going to be a little different. All right, so we can look at our CSS file. And this is what it compiled for us. It compiled that. But, and that's what we will actually upload to the site, right? Because browsers can't read SCSS files. They can only read CSS files. But every time I make a change to this, it's going to compile it in the background for me and, and create everything really cool. All right? So I can do things like, um, let's make this bigger. I can start to create variables using SCSS, like, I want my blue to be uh, something like, no, sorry, I've got to get my languages right. Blue is going to be something like uh, RGB, uh, RGB, something like that. I want that color of blue, and I can replace the word blue here with my variable blue, right? And if I look at my CSS now, you see it did the compilation for me and replaced the variable blue with what was what I had up, up above. And you notice it took out that variable because so, that's not valid CSS. Everybody see that? So I can, I can start writing valid SCSS here. It compiles it in the background for me, and I don't ever have to look at this file. I just upload that to my final destination. Isn't that cool? That's really cool. That's the way to go. That's the way to write code. So there's no reason now. Uh, it was a little bit of a pain to set up these file watchers outside in DOS and stuff like that. But now with it built into PHP Storm, there's no reason not to use SAS. Yeah, I think it's great. So um, let's say I have a uh, an LI. Let's see, a, a UL um, followed by an LI. Let's see, in SAS, I, can, I, I might have a, a subclass of an LI. Uh, I can style my ULs like this. Maybe have a background color of dollar blue again. But I can also uh, nest my style sheets together. So I can have an li that is inside of here, and it will inherit the background color of the ul, and it might have an additional 
uh, border or something. That's what I like to use, right? One pixel solid red. And if I look at my CSS, it creates the CSS for me. Now, it styles it differently so that I can see that it is nested. But in reality, this is just a, another style sheet like this, right? So that's saying I have an, an LI that is underneath a UL, which is almost always the case. Obviously, that's not a good example. But it, it gives you an idea that it compiles that. But in my code, this is very obvious that my LI is nested within my UL. So I can do this nesting, and it compiles that out for me really nicely. Yeah, and the PHP Storm does that for me. I can I can choose a different color. Then you have an error in here. If you have an error here, it will come up with a file, an error, and it it it'll actually, well, does on my Mac. Take the what like this? Okay, so it shows you an error. Colors must have either three or six digits. Very good. So it tells you right away that you have an error without having to go validate it. And if you look at the CSS, it tells you exactly where that error was. Line one of my test CSS. Isn't that great? Sweet stuff. So I put it back in. It recompiles it, um, takes away my error, recompiles it, takes it out. It's nice. The other nice thing is, I mean, we'll be doing more and more of this, but I can do things like uh, JavaScript style comments. I can say, this is a comment. But that's not a true CSS comment, right? How do we do CSS comments? Slash star, this will be shown. All right, so this is a true CSS style comment. This is not, but it's valid in SAS. So when I compile it, well, I have an error. Why? Okay, it just didn't recompile. Sometimes it doesn't catch it all the time that I made a change. It really does when I hit return. It really checks it, so I, I sometimes come back and hit return. So it compiled it here, and notice it took out the slash slash comment, but it left in the valid CSS comment. So if you want to comment your stuff that you don't want people to see, you put it in like this comment. Isn't that nice too? Compiles them out, takes them out of the code immediately. So I think that, that was a valid first intro. I really like PHP Storm and the SAS. Uh, there's no reason not to use it now. And this this... There's no reason not to just use this, even if you're not using any of the features of SAS yet. And as you learn them, you can just keep adding them to them, and your repertoire will get bigger, and you'll learn, you'll learn it as you go. The biggest thing I like are the variables. Variables are really cool. The other thing is we can do math inside of SAS, which makes it nice as we get into the responsive websites, doing math right in the compiler, right in the code. All right? So that's enough for today. We'll start more tomorrow.